Hi folks, today we're going to learn how to write a class. Uh, let's do writing a class worksheet number one. Uh, the job today is to write a class named Crab. So all classes should of course uh, be named at the top. And we always use capital first letters for the names of classes in the uh, world of Java. Should a class be public or private? Hey Gabe, should a class be pu public or private? Public? Correct. So uh, don't forget the lowercase word public in front of the name of your class. And, uh, whoops, I forgot to leave room for the word uh, pub, uh, class, so uh, let's move that over here a little bit. Whoops. Okay, so public class crab. And then you need one big fat set of curly braces. So here's your opening curly brace. And way down here at the bottom of your paper, you put the closing curly brace. Okay, that's been done. Check. Uh, we need a color property named my color. Well, some programmers put the properties at the top of a class, and other people uh, tend to put their properties at the bottom. Um, lately, I've been putting mine at the bottom of a class. So let, let's put the property named my color down at the bottom here. And this is a declaration statement. So you need a data type in front of the name of that property. The data type for my color is simply uh, you're being told that it's a color object. Now, properties. Unlike a class, a property should either be public or private. Hey, Gabe, um, what is the rule in Java uh, to, for properties? Is it a good style to make them public or private? Private. Very good. And again, I forgot to leave room for the word pro private, so excuse me here as I rewrite this real quickly. Properties should be, always be private for good style because we don't trust the client programmer to directly access the properties of a, a, in a class or of an object. And never set your property equal to something. Like, uh, don't set it equal to blue or red. Let's just put a semicolon there, and that is the property declaration statement for a property named my color. And don't forget, properties are also named, are, are also called instance variables by some people. Okay, so we've done that much so far. Oh, we also need a property uh, called my age that has the data type int. So let's put that in here. It should also be private. It doesn't really matter what order we list these properties at the bottom of our class. And uh, for good style, you should like describe each the purpose of each property in a little comment, which I'm not going to do here. Okay, next uh, order of business. We must include a default constructor. Well, default constructors are usually written out at the top of a class, and they're always public. And the name of a default constructor must be the same as the name of the class itself. And they don't, you don't put a return type. You don't put the word uh, int, double, or void in here. Okay, uh, default constructors always have empty parentheses, that is, no parameters. And the job of a default constructor is usually to initialize all of the properties to zero or some other default value. Well, according to the directions here, uh, since color isn't really something that has a number like zero, uh, the property my color should be initialized to red. So that simply takes the line of code something equals something. Well, you put the name of the property on the left, and the value that you want stored there, you put it on the right. And in this case, we're using the built-in color class it comes with Java, and the word red is a constant, so it should be typed in all uppercase letters. Uh, technically, you would need to import the color class at the top of this file with an import command, but since that's not usually covered on the AP exam, and you can just assume that that's been done. Don't put the word color in front here of your my color, because then you've declared it twice in the same file, and that's illegal. Uh, that's just not what you want to do, actually. So do not type out the data type color here. And now we need to initialize my age to the number zero according to the directions. So you simply write my age equals zero. And note also that you would not put the word int here either. You don't put the data type twice uh, for int. So uh, let's get rid of that uh, mess up, that mistake. Okay, there you have it so far. We have uh, two properties and a default constructor what else does this uh, worksheet tell us to do? Oh, we need a other constructor, what, what Minnick calls a other constructor that takes two parameters. Well, a other constructor, uh, I, I need room now, 
Well, no, I don't. I'll just uh, squeeze that in here. Uh, a other constructor is pretty much the same thing as our default constructor, except it takes two parameters. You can name these two parameters whatever you want. You can name them X and Y, A and B, uh, Fred and Bill. But uh, it's good style, at least in the way I teach this course, it's good style to name your properties, uh, whatever the name, name your parameters, I meant to say, whatever the name of the properties are with a lowercase first letter, like you would use age and color without the prefix my. Of course, age uh, is a parameter here. It needs to be known uh, to Java that that's an int. And color here with a lowercase c needs to be identified as the data type color with a capital C. Well, in the, in the other constructor, similar to what we did in the default constructor, we need to set something equal to something for both of these properties. Well, you put the property that you're, you're setting equal to something on the left, and the value that they're being assigned goes on the right. Now, instead of zero being placed here for my age, you're really uh, putting in the parameter name. And uh, we would put color here. So if a client program up here was calling the crab other constructor two values, like the number three and perhaps the color uh, blue, would be passed as parameters. And those two would plug in for those two parameters and therefore assign from right to left into those two properties. So that's how that works uh, out in the real world whenever this class would be used. We would have that uh, set of values being passed in. Okay, there you have it. Uh, there is a constructor and a default constructor. I need to make a little room here for the other two things that are being required uh, on this worksheet, so uh, erasing that just to make room there. I now need a uh, method that is called getAge. You should know that something that starts with get is really a accessor method. Accessor methods are also public and they should start with the lowercase uh, prefix get. Uh, they never have parameters. Accessor methods never have anything in the parentheses. They do need a body. And accessor methods just always return something. And each accessor works with each property. So get age obviously connects with my age, the property. So its job is to return my age. And uh, therefore, it returns an int. Don't forget your return data type. And don't forget, Gabe, your semicolon. Uh, semicolon should go at the end of uh, any statement like this. And there you go. There is an accessor method named getAge. It might be a good style to put a comment here in your code that just says accessor methods. Up here, you should have said something like uh, constructors, just for good style, so that other people can read your code more easily, especially beginners. Okay, so uh, we're done with the accessor method, and here's how that would be used in the real world by a client program. Up, up in some public static void main string args uh, uh, main method, you might have the line of code like gabe.getAge. So that line of code uh, may be embedded inside of a system out print statement would cause eight, uh, Gabe's age to be printed out. Let's say that Gabe is uh, 11 years old. The computer, when it uh, calls the getAge method, it comes into this class and finds the getAge method, executes it, and whatever is currently stored as Gabe's age, perhaps the number 11, would be returned and therefore plug into this system out print statement. Okay, last of all, we need to write a modifier method named setAge. So let's erase all of this, making room for setAge. We're almost finished with this video. I know it's been a long time here, nine minutes. We're almost finished. Okay, a set age method, also known as a setter or a modifier method. Should that be public or private gate? Public? Yeah, uh, of course. All methods are always public. The only thing that you ever make private is the are the properties, at least according to the AP exam. Okay, so we have public and we have the name set age. Set methods, setters, always take parameters. In fact, just one parameter. We need something uh, uh, that can store the number that's being sent from the, from the uh, client program. So uh, let's just name it x. No, that's bad. That's, that would be bad style. Let's name it um, like num. No, that's even bad style. Let's name it age because it just makes sense to have it named age. Do not name it my age. You've already used my age as the name of the property. 
So it's got to be anything other than my age. Hey, what data type, Gabe? Gabe, what data type uh, should my age be? Int? Yes, int. It would not make sense either to make it a double because the, under, the matching property is an int, so the parameter should be an int. I see students do that all the time. I don't know why they do that, but int is an int, not a double. And certainly don't put something like a string there. Um, strings are for words. Okay, uh, in the body of this uh, setter method, we simply need one line of code, and uh, we need to set something equal to something. Oh, we just set the property, my age, equal to this formal parameter name, age. Pretty much the same line of code that we had a while ago here until I erased it with the other constructor that was here. We had the line of code, if you remember, my age equals age. Okay, don't forget your semicolon. And now how would this work? Oh, and don't forget the word void here because there is no return statement, so the return type is void. Okay, so in closing this video up, let's, uh, as our last uh, example, let's see how the client programmer would make use of set age. Um, on a line of code all by itself, up in a client program, you might see gabe.setAge12. Um, so the number 12 is in the parentheses, therefore it comes down and it plugs in for age. Therefore, we always work from right to left in assignment statements. So therefore, the number 12 plugs into my age. And therefore, his, the number that's stored behind the scenes for my age is now 12. So that line of code doesn't print anything out on the screen, but it does change his age from 11 to 12. So that uh, in the rest of the game, whatever game he's playing, Minecraft or Call of Duty or, or World Warcraft, whatever, uh, that character's age is now 12 instead of 11. Have a great day.